we're going to do some duet music for you right now. You'll hear a bunch of fiddle tunes and uh, some singing, some guitar playing. And I never sing except Bruce makes me sing once in a while, so uh, I'm going to sing on one song. I love Just making you sing. <sighs> Well, let's uh, let's do this first. When, let's do the first tune. Let, let's skip the first tune and do the second tune instead. Okay. Right. Are we in tune? <laughs> okay. Here goes. Yeah. All right. Have, it. have at it. As we say. One, two, three. try to be kind of folk music completists in the sense of covering all the necessary topics of conversation that you'd sing about during a folk music concert. <laughs> the next tune we're about to play for you, I'm going to sing it, is, is uh, Tony feels this is very grounding. He enjoys playing this tune. I don't know whether it's because it's about body parts. <laughs> <laughs> Just hard to know. But... It's called the old the old jawbone. <laughs> Walked 
jawbone, walk and a jawbone, chalk, jawbone, eat with a knife and a fork. Walk jawbone and walk away, walk jawbone both night and day. Jawbone broke and the wire flew Hang my head in the highland tree Walk jawbone and walk away Walk jawbone both night and day Same old man came riding by, said, young man, your horse must die. If he dies, I'll tan his skin. If he lives, I'll ride it again. Walk jawbone and walk away. Walk jawbone both night and day. Walk jawbone and walk away. Walk jawbone both night and day.
Thank you so much. That's the trouble with tunes like that. You can play them all night long. It's been okay, done. we'll do it again. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just so much fun. I've always wanted to do that sort of a conceptual thing to play uh, a set of music and just not stop and see how long it would take till the last audience member left. <laughs> you know, because you say, oh, we're going to play till 2 in the morning. I'm, yeah, yeah, do that. And then if we actually did it, would any of you be here at 2 in the morning? Yeah. All right, let's try this. Let's see what happens. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, now I think that, let's see, we have, um, yeah, we have a tune that you wrote, I believe. Uh, I did Coming write this next. Tony and I, uh, we've been, well, we've been pals for a long, long time. We had, a, we had a little trio for a while, some years back, called Jawbone, and the first time we got together to, to rehearse, um, it was Tony and myself and a wonderful guitar player, some of you might name, know, named Paula Bradley. Uh, we were all kind of putting our ideas on the table together and seeing what kind of tunes stuck and which didn't and and Tony turns to me and he says well let's play something you you wrote and I said well I've never written anything <laughs> <laughs> and Tony being you know a slight arm twisted that he was he says well you have one week to write a tune <laughs> and I'm calling you every day so I wrote this tune and uh and I didn't know what to name it. And uh, I'll tell the short version of this if anybody's a fan of South Park, pardon my, my language, but um, there's a little line that one of the characters says every once in a while, and it's the bastards, they killed Kenny. <laughs> but I happen to play music with one of the more polite people in the universe who wasn't gonna have any of that kind of language in public. So we shortened it, and it's now an Irish tune, and it's called Kill Kenny. <laughs> Thank you, Tony Trishka. next tune uh, from Mr. Cohen. Nathan asked, asked us to do this one and we decided we don't really know it so we're going to have to, oh no, we are doing it, sorry. <laughs> we will do this, of course we're going to do it. Uh, Nathan's been so amazing to us, uh, he and Elizabeth both, we've just had such a good time here and the least we can do is play this tune for him. Yeah. Tell me about this tune. I don't well, know what you think about the song. A, without seeming too professorial, you know that Tony and I both teach at Berkeley College of Music, so we, uh, which is a really incredibly wonderful place, but uh, lends things to 
a little bit of pontification from time to time, but I won't tell you the long version of the history of this story. I'll only tell you the, the last four generations that it came through. And, <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's an old English folk ballad. It's made its way into the American kind of uh, repertoire into the mountains, and it's just a beautiful old love song, and, um, and it's called The Blackest Crow. <laughs> tune that we play and well actually they're all my favorite tunes but uh, some of you if there are some of you bluegrass folks out there you may know a tune called Salt Creek or not 
All right, we have one or two. And this is a tune that kind of inspired Bill Monroe to write Salt Creek. And um, the great thing about these old time fiddle tunes is that there's so many different versions of them. These tunes all have the same title, but you can play them 18 different ways, but this is, we're gonna do it just one way tonight. This one's called Salt River. Are we gonna do it the same way? Sure. Uh, as, never mind. The way we rehearsed it, yeah. and do even smaller discussion groups right now and uh, do a couple of solo numbers for you right now and uh, have Bruce play a tune on this beautiful old guitar. This guitar was built in 1926. I wasn't there. <laughs> play you a piece of music that was recorded around 1926 by a man named Little Hat Jones. Tony, Tony and I have been talking about Little Hat Jones this week. I recorded a new, I have a new recording 
um, my pandemic project was to put myself back on the guitar again, which was my my first instrument, and uh, and fell in love with it again. And I'll play you a piece that's on there. If you want to check out the CD, there's a there's a pretty good fiddler that plays the fiddle parts on it. His name is Daryl Anger. He's amazing. <laughs> that was a very facetious comment. But this is an old guitar, so give me a second. It's not fair that he can be that good on the fiddle and the guitar. <laughs> and the banjo, too. It's unbelievable. They don't ever let me play my banjo. Surprise. Um, this is a medley that uh, I put together starting with John Henry, the steel driving man, and then going into a little bit of Bonaparte's retreat. The last, uh, I had the pleasure of playing this with John Hartford one night. We were doing fiddle banjo duets, and uh, he taught me the very last portion of this uh, that came from the fiddling of a guy named Ed Haley. And then uh, I'm going into a uh, 
tune that uh, I recorded on one of my albums, and I never remember what I called it, because you just, it's easy to write tunes, it's harder to name them. So uh, for tonight, uh, in the best interests of shameless pandering, I'm calling it the Rockwood Breakdown. <laughs> Rockport, oh God. Oh God, <laughs> try harder. <sighs> anyway, never mind. It's an unnamed banjo tune. There's a place in New York City that I play from time to time called The Rockwood, so I have that on my brain. The Rockport Breakdown, thank you very much. Here's another tune that's my favorite that we do all night long. Oh, that was, um... I never just said that. It's called Washington's March, and this guy knows so many fiddle tunes, and he just keeps coming up with one amazing tune after another. It just never stops. And this is a really droney one, almost bagpipey in some ways.
Never mind. Anyway, we'd like to do another tune for you right now. Okay. <laughs> Washington's March. set of tunes um, that we like to play together because they're in the same key. <laughs> and they're both good. The first one's called Little Rabbit, also, uh, also known as Rabbit, Where's Your Mammy? And so I heard somebody sing lyrics for Rabbit, where's your mammy? Rabbit, where's your mammy? Ain't got time to tell you there's a greyhound right behind me. Rabbit, and we'll follow it with a Kentucky tune that apparently must be about fish. Yes. Because it's called Jeff Sturgeon. Ooh, my fiddle is not cooperating. Hold on. Because it's dry out and the pigs want to pop. Bear with me. Speaking of which, um, two parrots are sitting on a perch, and one says to the other, Do you smell fish? That's one of those delayed laughter jokes. <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> I'm trying my best. <laughs>
Thank you so much. kind of brought to people's consciousnesses by um, Dave N. Rock. We have any Dave N. Rock fans out here? <clears throat> I grew up listening to him, and uh, my very first banjo teacher used to sing this song as well, and I'm sure he learned it from Dave N. Rock. It's an African-American play party song for kids, and uh, it's been done by a whole bunch of different folks, including Kate and Anna McGarrigle. Uh, to other of my most favorite folks in the world to hear her sing. They're unbelievable. And uh, there's now one called the McGarrigle Hour that has Loudon Wainwright and Kate and Anna and uh, Rufus and Martha Wainwright and just all the McGarrigles. It's a great album if you get a chance to pick it up or stream it as the case may be. Uh, so, and this is one I'm going to actually sing a verse on. Bruce sings three or four verses, I sing one verse, and I guess that's just as well. Maybe next year I'll get two verses. Uh, we'll see what happens. Anyway, um, this is called Green Green Rocky Road. Where did you hear this, by the way? Me? Yeah, oh. you. <laughs> You're the only one up here besides oh, me. <laughs> Where did you guys hear this? <laughs> I heard this. I heard Dave Van Ronk play at a venue called the Cedar Cultural Center in uh, Minneapolis years ago. And he was on his last, he, he suffered from emphysema and some other ailments, but he performed right up close to the end. And, and I heard, and he played that. You know, and I've heard him on recording doing various things. And, if you're, a, if you're a Bob Dylan fan, then you would know Dave Van Ronk. And if you have a chance to read a book called The Mayor of McDougal Street, it's the biography uh, kind of guided by Elijah Wald, I think. Um, and it's a really, really funny read about what it was like to live in Greenwich Village in New York City in the 50s and 60s. Oh, 
soda cracker does your mama chew tobacco if your mama chews tobacco sing ooga dooga ooga dooga soda cracker crying green green rocky road promenade in green tell me who you love tell me who you love when I go to Baltimore don't need no carpet on the floor come along Go with me, we'll go down to Galilee. Crying green, green, rocky road, promenade in green. Tell me who you love, tell me who you love. Singing green, green, rocky road, promenade in green. Tell me who you love, tell me who you love. Tony Trishka on vocals. <laughs> well, we're not leaving yet. But this, just because this next tune is called Down the Road doesn't mean that's where we're going just yet. You all doing okay? You having a good time? keep playing along and I'm doing the thing I love with somebody I love and I, every once in a while I get a flashback to all these beautiful students that we heard you play earlier yeah. tonight and it just lit my light so much. So here's a little bit of Down the Road, otherwise known as Drive Fast and Reckless, you'll get there sooner.
some of you folks may know a tune called Billy in the Low Ground. And um, I was just uh, mentioning a little bit earlier how certain fiddle tunes can have the same name and just have uh, other variants and just go to different places. And this is a really cool version of this tune that uh, I happened to work up. And then I said, hey, do you know this version of Billy in the Low Ground? And he said, yeah. And it turns out we know exactly the same version, just coincidentally. It's funny, I thought you said you had an aversion to Billy in the Low Ground. No, I love this song. So that's why you want to play it. and picking your instrument up out of the case and it being really out of tune and you wondering whether the last thing you played in that concert last night was really that out of tune. Been there. Oh yeah. All the time. Uh, Billy in the low ground. How's this go? Go ahead. One. slower than the last one before, um, whatever that was. Anyway, here's another tune with floating lyrics. I used to play in a, a band called Country Granola, which was a sports rock band. I'm you chortle, you guffaw. No, I actually was in a sports rock band in the early 70s in Syracuse, New York, and uh, we did things like I am a lineman for the Giants, and I play, you know, you get the idea. We did all sorts of football medley, baseball medleys. But the leader of our band had a phrase which was, fast and loud pleases the crowd, soft and slow, they all go. So this is a slow tune. Please stick around. No use for that red rock and 
It's our last number. Okay, we'll be here until two in the morning. <laughs> now, thanks for coming out, and I know many of you were not here to see the two of us. There was another incredible band here tonight. And let's just give all those amazing students another huge, huge hand. They're doing such a great job. Thank you, for, thank you so much to, to Rockport Music for, for supporting these activities. To Elizabeth Safan in particular for treating us so well, for making sure we didn't get lost. And <laughs> giving us the code to the building so we could get in. <laughs> and uh, and to, to all the tech crew, light and, 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 and sound, making us sound louder and better than we are. Uh, we do have thing that, that, that this people in our industry call merch. There's I a table full of cool stuff out there. Uh, I have one question for you. Do you folks like tote bags? <laughs> do you need a tote? Everyone needs a tote bag. I when think you, you do. When you go to the grocery store, you don't often get bags these days, so you need a tote bag. Yeah. And socks. Do you yeah. like socks? Do you wear socks? Is that Raise your hand if you're wearing socks tonight. If you're not, okay. very good, thank you. But the, and another thing, besides banjo socks and tote bags, you need a fountain pen uh, to make yes. your shopping list. So soon I forget. This is a thing with me. I collect fountain pens, I love fountain pens. Writing in cursive is a really wonderful thing. And if I may say so, I got a real problem with the schools not teaching it anymore. Let's not get so, political. Let's not get political. I told you not, There's no <laughs> politics to this. It's just a beautiful thing you get to do with your hand. Anyway, I have personalized fountain pens out there. If you want to try writing in cursive, I you, should can, also. you can curse at me. Yeah. Cursive at you, yes. I should all, ouch. Uh, I should also mention that we have these online schools uh, through Peckhead Nation. This gentleman is a fiddle. School and and, and, uh, and artist works as we're told. We we work for different corporations together. <laughs> so, any and all of the above. We know a lot of you are musicians and that you you uh, you dig picking it up and doing it as well as listening. And so do we. So, thank you very very much. It's been a gas to be with you all. Thank you.
Thank you, folks. Thank you so much. Thank you.